is brought to you by Property Express Life. My name is Nanaya Ochoevia. Thank you for joining us today. We're having a conversation with the CEO of the Ghana Real Estate Agency Council, Nana Otu Texan. Hello, sir. Hello. Thank you for having us. Don't mention at all. You have a very beautiful office. We're trying to get it together. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, diving right into the conversation, let's talk about the Real Estate Agency Act 2020. Yeah. What's it about? And then, for the layman on the street like me, mm -hmm. how is this act protecting us as tenants? Okay. So, the Real Estate Agency Act was passed in 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, it was essentially to regulate the real estate sector. Okay. Particularly the players in the sector. So I, I consider it as soft regulation. So the people who interface between the members of the public and those who have to actually offer uh, um, properties either for rent or for sale. Mm -hmm. So that is essentially how it was set up. It was also set up to try and rationalize the space. Because as it is now, there are no standards. There's no professionalism. There's a bit of fraud and there's a bit of risk in real estate transactions. Mm. So to your second question, um, the act and, and, and what it provides for would actually bring more efficiencies to the average person who is mm. dealing in the real estate market. Mm. Um, I think further down as we go into conversation, I'll tell you what we have seen, the general market failure that led to the act. It's yes. been on the books for a number of years, mm. uh, but it came in primarily to make sure that the market is cleaned up. Okay. and made sure that everybody would benefit from it. Okay. Yeah. And then, wa was there an act before this, or this was a whole new introduction? Yes, this is a new act. So wow. it came around the same time as Land Act. So mm. I guess the government uh, um, has wanted to bring these things in. Uh, I have known uh, for as far back as I was in university that these things have been on the books. Mm. And it's gone through different parliaments. And in 2020, it came out uh, with the Land Act. So there hasn't been regulation of the real estate sector before. Um, this is a brand new act which we are trying to implement to give effect to the will of Parliament. Okay. And how has the pace of your work been so far since you started working in this office? Um, like many things in Ghana, it's, you know, it, it is a pace, mm. uh, but of course for everything when you're starting, it's not as, 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 uh, as um, fast as mm. I guess everyone would want it to be. Mm. But it is a pace that nonetheless, um, if sustained, will see us to where we want to mm. get to. It's brand new, there are no structures in place, there are no staff offices and all that so mm. to put all those things together taking into account the government's budget cycles and mm. the you know all the structures that there are in government and civil service mm. uh, it would necessarily not be as fast as perhaps some might want it but mm. I have the hope that over time we would achieve uh, uh, what we've set up to, to sure. deliver. Sure, and we hope with you. And when it comes to property valuation system in the country, how far have you gone with that? So we are not strictly going to deal with property valuation at mm. all. Okay. Um, as I say, we are going to regulate the players in the market. So okay. we have five main people who we are going to regulate. Uh, we're going to regulate the brokers, okay. the agents. Mm. We're also going to regulate those who offer real estate agency services. Mm. And in that category, we have real estate developers, mm. we have real estate marketing companies, mm. and we also have real estate managers. So mm. your facilities managers and your property managers would also be regulated. Um, with this, I guess the question of valuation comes in. Okay. Um, when somebody is offering a property to sell, um, the Ghana Institution of Surveyors are legally mandated to provide valuations in the country. It is a question that we have to have as a country mm. or with the institution as to whether, for instance, if a property is valued at 2 million Ghana cities, then we require a professional valuer to have actually have sight, had sight of it. Because what is actually happening now is um, sellers are actually just naming their price. Mm. So if somebody has a house mm. in East Legon, he says, well, I bought it for 100,000 10 years ago and I put this in and therefore tomorrow I want 5 million. Mm. That is what is happening and yeah. that ought not to happen. Mm. 
that is a reason why our price because in real estate practice as soon as there is evidence mm. of the sale of a property or of a transaction at a certain price mm. that price becomes the market evidence and so you can only go above that unless mm. the market falls and readjust it so mm. that is why it is dangerous that we're going that way people are just naming their prices and if anybody buys then that becomes the market evidence and the prices keep going up so we're coming back to the question we are not strictly going to do it valuation but once we are operational, once we get the transaction reports back from those that we regulate, we would, after a couple of years, have a body of uh, um, data mm. concerning real estate transactions mm. that would benefit the valuation profession, mm. or that would make us all become educated in valuing properties. Mm. And I give you an example. If you're valuing a two-bedroom house in East Legon, or two two-bedroom houses in East Legon, mm. most likely the land sizes are different. Most likely one has ensuite bedro uh, uh, um, uh, uh, bedrooms. Mm. Most likely one has a bigger living room. At this point, we do not have the data to be able to aggregate to see mm. whether the one on a 100 by 100 plot, two-bedroom, mm. should sell or rent more than the one on, for instance, a 70 by 80 plot. All we're doing is, well, this one sold for that much, and so this one must sell for that much, or this one is renting for that much, and so that must rent for that much. So once we get the data, we will be a bit more scientific mm. in our valuation, mm. and that would benefit the valuation profession. But we are not directly involved in valuation or okay. going to directly influence the valuation okay. sector in the country. Okay, so I think you've touched on the need for my next question. Yeah. As in, have you started any form of registration for your stakeholders, as in the brokers, the consultants, the realtors, and all that? So formal registration, mm -hmm. that brings about the rights of being, uh, saying that you are registered and qualified to practice uh, yeah. as a practitioner under the Act, mm -hmm. hasn't actually started. Oh, okay. We are still in the building block stage trying to put things in place but on our website which is www.reac.gov.gh mm. uh, there's a link there where if you do have an interest in registering because we're using that to also gauge public um, I guess appetite mm. towards the regulation and see so that once everything is in place we're actually meeting people where the need is mm. So um, on our website, you can go on there now. There's a link where you can register your initial interest mm -hmm. uh, to show us whether you want to be a property developer or an agent or a broker and all that. Uh, but we haven't started formal registration yet. Mm. And can your stakeholders be assured of their security when it comes to the data they are putting on your website? Well, in terms of this initial gathering, mm. um, yes, we, we would always try and make sure that there's, there's as much safety in the data that we gather. Uh, I am <laughs> personally a, a, a trained data protection supervisor with the okay. Data Protection Commission. So um, not feigning to be an expert in that mm. field, beside my property uh, knowledge, I have a good understanding mm. of what safeguards we have to put in place. But at this point, we are not dealing with big data. Mm -hmm. And that does not dimin diminish the fact that if even you collect data from one person, you still have to have, you still have the obligation to protect it as much. Mm -hmm. uh, but once we go full scale, we would have more resources to look at those things. And then we would look at things like encryption, mm -hmm. the necessity of the data that we gather. Um, thankfully, we are covered by the law. Okay. in terms of the fact that the law mandates us to collect data. Mm. So we are not like the private person out there who collects data and who has to justify the data that they are collecting. We also need to justify the data collection. But with my personal knowledge of these things, mm. um, I guess we are starting on a very good footing mm. to make sure that the data that we collect is very secure and uh, at the barest minimum is according to the law, which is the Data Protection Act. Mm. And when we started the conversation, you were saying something about some of the inefficiencies you've seen in the market that called for the Real Estate Agency Act. So what are some of these inefficiencies and how do you intend to tackle them? Okay, so um, I see them basically in five different areas. So we have price, uh, 
mm. we have risk, mm. we have um, professionalism, we have money laundering, and then we have fraud. Mm. Those five areas, I think, generally got themselves into what you can term as a market failure. Mm. So the market itself was not able to um, self-regulate. So mm. in places like the UK, the market actually regulates itself. So government has, over the time, fought itself to, from bringing in laws to regulate the real estate agency sector. But you go to New Zealand and other countries, they've had the need to bring it in. So when you talk about fraud, fraud, the average Ghanaian knows about some fraud which involves property. You know, people take your deposits and they run away mm -hmm. because they have no offices. They come pressure sell, they take your money mm -hmm. and you don't see them again. Um, you have risk. Risk primarily in legal transactions. So, for instance, uh, people buy property off plan mm -hmm. now. Property is not built. You start paying the money uh, and then the time comes when you want to get your property and it's either not built or if it's been built, it's been built to a poor quality. And then when you try to force, you know, observance of the contract, it becomes an issue. So that is one of the issues. Then mm -hmm. we have money laundering. Mm -hmm. People are using property as it is the world over to launder ill-gotten gains. So we have to look at that. Mm -hmm. Then you have professionalism. Mm -hmm. So ideally, members of the public should be able to go into um, an estate agency practice or a brokerage and have an expectation for a standard of service. Mm -hmm. You know, what their price certainty, where they are, um, their charges, their fees, the forms that they fill, all those are not presently in the market. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, when we are able to come together and get our rules and regulations as we expect them to be, mm -hmm. what we are going to offer the society or, or the country at large is efficiencies in these areas. Mm -hmm. So fraud, of course, you can never remove fraud. But at least we would put in place things that empowers members of the public who would then be able to self-monitor or at least know what to expect in such a way that those who are thinking of getting involved in fraud uh, perhaps may think twice about it. Mm -hmm. Money laundering. Once we have data, we're able to tell what is happening. Mm -hmm. We're able to tell who is buying what. Mm -hmm. We're able to tell, uh, for instance, um, how property has been financed. And if you look at the Act, there's a provision where transactions would all have to be cashless. Mm. If, we, if we get to that stage where all transactions are cashless, it would still not reduce money laundering, mm. but at least it would cut it down or it would make it capable of being uh, verifiable. Mm. Uh, when you look at uh, professionalism, it will come through the rules that we put through. Mm. So ultimately, we, we as a council now trying to put together things and we're also listening to members of it. So the five areas that I've mentioned mm. are not strictly all the areas that we're going to look at. We're going to look at more if it is necessary mm. because a new, as, as, as the laws come in, people get clever. Yeah. So you have to continually renew mm. your thoughts and processes to make sure that you're able to ultimately bring the efficiency into the mm. real estate sector as, as is required. Mm. That's good. And even when it comes to the professionalism, I think one issue to be with, when people are not willing to deal with professionals, mm -hmm. there's one thing about Ghanaians we like saying, okay, I know this person, yeah. an uncle does this. Mm -hmm. So instead of going to professionals, we like to deal with people we know. So I don't know if there will be some like education on yeah. that one to, for the public to know it's just the right thing to deal with professionals. Okay. Mm. So yes, education, I take your point, that's paramount mm. uh, because nobody knows the law is there, nobody yeah. knows the agency is there, it's a new thing. You have to make sure that people are aware of it. Mm. But then to go back into the act itself, mm. there are penalties for people who operate in the sector who are not licensed. Okay. And uh, it is my personal hope mm. that would make an example of a few people. You know, Thanks if if, you. if we can get about 10 or 15 people and, and, and make an example of them, mm. because that's what we need as a country. Yeah. We need to make sure that our laws are respected mm. and people follow these. Mm. Um, as well, um, in terms of registering property mm. with the Lands Commission, for instance, if your transaction, if we don't issue a transaction certificate, that is, per the Act, 
you are not able to register your property with the Lands Commission. Okay. So that as well, of course, not everybody wants to register their land. Some are letting, mm. and they don't need to necessarily get those transaction certificates. But if you are selling or buying, you would need to make sure you go to the properly regulated people so you get a transaction certificate and with that transaction certificate you can register your property. Mm -hmm. So unless you do not care about registering your property, then somehow you have to come through to us. Okay. So it's, um, it's a whole body of, of rules uh, which we hope uh, would, and I wouldn't say it's going to be easy. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be an easy road. Yeah. But I think if we all get ourselves together, we would realize if you are perhaps active today mm -hmm. and you're not being taken advantage of, mm -hmm. then tomorrow you might be the one being taken advantage of. Yeah. So we have to make sure that we all get together and make this work for our mutual benefit. And ultimately, sure. we would all be happy for, for what we have done. Sure, sure. And how can professionals register their interest with your council? So, um, as I touched on earlier on, at mm -hmm. this point, they can register their interest on, on, our on our website so okay. that at least we know they are there and then when everything gets in place, we, they will be the first people to be informed. You know, that formal uh, registration has started. Mm. That is the main way that uh, professionals can register with us now. Yeah, and earlier on you were speaking about the cashless system. I think the sector minister mentioned it in December. Yeah. How far has it gone? So it is uh, the, the the function of a cashless system um, is 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 something that we would have to liaise with those that we register mm. because it is not even though regulation you have to be careful with regulation yeah. if you regulate and regulate too hard it becomes a problem um, we have to as a council have the conversations with the banking sector and see how they create the environment that mm. makes that possible. Okay. You know, so if it's about paying by Momo, if it's about paying by bankers draft mm. and all that, so plants are afoot for us to have those conversations. So uh, for those we are registering, mm. we would also act as some sort of a parent body okay. to try and make sure that, for instance, in, in insurance. Mm. So a lot of them or anybody who registers with us has to have uh, professional indemnity insurance. Mm. Now, we have to have the conversation with um, the uh, um, insurance uh, companies okay. to make sure that they have the products available mm -hmm. at rates which are affordable. Mm -hmm. We have to come out with the bands within which they would, they would have to register. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, we can say if your turnover is up to 100,000 Ghana cities a year, mm -hmm. then you're in a certain bracket. If your okay. turnover is between 100,000 and 500,000, mm -hmm. so we just, uh, 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 like in the on the banking front and with cashless payments, mm -hmm. we have to have that conversation sure. to make sure that once people are registered, those mechanisms or those processes are in yeah, place to go. make it easy for them. Yeah. We don't want anybody to be registered and then find them going to go to the banks individually to do mm. and negotiate. Mm. And there are other things, for instance, like uh, having client accounts. Mm. So the law requires every agent to have a client account. Mm. It can be in one of two ways. Either you have one main account and the bank is able to compartmentalize and put Akosuya Mansa's account in, in the same account and Kweku Mansa's account or the bank actually opens it's a different account for you every time you have a client. Mm. Those are all conversations that we have to have with the okay. bank. So that is how I see the cashless system working. Mm. We have to have a wider consultation to make sure that one, it is acceptable and workable by those that we regulate, and also mm. it is acceptable by the banking industry who are essentially going to be the backbone of, of that policy. Sure, sure. And would you say you have enough support from your key stakeholders? In spirit, yes. In spirit, yes. Um, and, and I think that a lot of the genuine players in the market are really keen mm -hmm. that regulation starts so that it, it evens out the field and mm -hmm. it makes things better. Um, of course, because we are a regulator, mm -hmm. we're careful how much we expose ourselves to those that we regulate, just in case we get cited for you know conflict of interest and all that. But I know that from my road shows and from the interactions that I've had with a lot of the stakeholders, they all wish as well. Mm. Um, and uh, we are thankful for, for their support. In fact, a lot of these stakeholders are behind 
the coming into force of the act. Oh, okay. So they themselves sh had shown interest and, mm. and you know, had, had pushed this to fruition. Mm. So I couldn't say that they are not supporting us or sure. we have any conflicts, mm. as it were. Uh, but um, we, as we build, mm. some of them do come. Some of them have offered their services and time. And we will take them up as and when the time is right. Mm. Yeah. And when it comes to creating employment for the youth, what do you think your stakeholders can do to help in that sector? Um, hmm. It's a big question. Yeah. So I guess, I guess once we rationalize the sector, mm. because you see real estate can be broken down into various facets. You can have somebody whose job it is just to put up an advert board. Okay. You know, yeah. if we come to the say we decide that we are standardizing advert boards, mm. that if you're selling a property or renting a property, the board should be two feet by ten feet mm. and it should be this material and you can take it off and like in the in the in the highway industry. Mm. The people that there are those who would just be sweeping the highways, mm. there are those who would just be putting cones down, mm. there are those who would just be directing traffic. Mm. They're all part of the highway sector. Yeah. So when we become efficient mm. in how we are delivering our services, mm. there are people who are even just going to specialize, for instance, in real estate data mm. and using it to generate apps and applications, yeah. you know, to make yeah. things better. So the land registry in the UK, for instance, has a system where data is made available for young persons who are interested in IT and sometimes with sponsorship to just express themselves mm. and use the data to create employment. Mm. Um, in our case, we have created a two-tier system, basically for what in the UK would call agency. Mm. Um, we have the brokers and we have the agents, mm. which is more the North American system. Mm. So technically, the agency categorization is easy entry mm. for anybody who wants a job, who wants mm. to enter. Every agent has to work under a broker. So the brokers would, of course, employ as many agents as they need to do their work. And the agents could be self-employed or they may be employed by the brokers. Mm. So there is an entry point. But I think especially in real estate agency, real estate agency services, uh, it could be as a mason, as a plumber, and there are a lot of other um, professions and categorizations of work. Mm. that can be spun off mm. the, the, the efficiency of the real estate agency sector. Mm. At this point, uh, you and I may have employed the services of a mason or a carpenter one time or the other, and they have let us down. And We have all those stories. Mm. Once the system is efficient, mm. once the system actually self gets to the point where we see the importance of regulation, where you know that if you're paying a mason, they're going to do a good job for you and you don't have to look back and think that you have to stop work and go and sit down and monitor them. Mm. Then there'll be more work for the youth, mm. you know, provided that they are willing, ready, and able to engage in this sector. Because mm. not everybody wants to get into property. Yes. Even though the allure of money in property tends to get a lot of people saying, oh, you know, I want to go into property. It's capital intensive. Mm. So for me, I think the youth should address themselves to the service part of real estate. Okay. You know, the easy entry jobs. You know, if you have handy, work, uh, hand, uh, hand, uh, handy skills, mm. you know, just painting or plumbing or cleaning. You know, I know people who have set up cleaning businesses and they're yes. doing very well, yeah. you know. So the youth can come through that element. Mm. And then over time, when the agency is able to put in place courses, which mm. according to our act, we have to put in place, then they can come and rise up through the ranks by just sitting these courses and passing to be able to operate and become a broker or a developer or anything, so long as they're able to get themselves in. I, I would personally put myself to um, encourage as many mm. um, youth of, of the youth who want to get into the sector. Mm. I think that it's a new agency mm. and the people who are going to carry it in the future are not people like myself. Mm. You know, we are, we are, we, we, we are getting out mm. soon, if not soonish. So um, the agency itself, in terms of even running it and keeping it going, mm. I see it as something which the youth must run. Okay. So that when some of us are off the scene, they can take over and, and carry on the dream or the mm. vision that uh, we would have been able to set in place. Mm. Thank yeah. you very much. Are there any last words you would like to add? Um, no. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> what should I say? Um, 
I thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Um, and I hope that we would have a positive story to sure. tell. For me, I think this is a clarion call for us all Ghanaians. Yeah. And we can have all the negative um, statements about how we are, how we take laws, and how we don't want to follow rules and all that. Uh, but if we have to face the challenges of the decades ahead, mm. we have to change things. Yes. You know, we can't do the same old things and expect a different result. Mm -hmm. So I would love that Ghanaians give us the support that okay. they can. Um, I always say that my doors are open. Mm. I would love criticism. Uh, but when you do criticize, I would want you to bring a solution. Yes. Because if you don't have a solution, then I guess what I have on the table perhaps is as good as anything. But let's keep ourselves active. Let's keep ourselves on our toes. Mm. If you find anything wrong, if you think that there's anything that we're doing wrong, or you think there's anything that we can do better, mm. then by all means, uh, um, you can contact us through our website. Mm. Uh, our email is info at reac.gov.gh. Mm. And uh, we would love to hear from you. Okay. Uh, again, it is slow going, but we will get there. Sure. We will surely get there. Thank you for joining us today. For more information on the work of the Ghana Real Estate Agency Council, kindly visit our website. The website will be displayed on the screen, so you can go there, shut them up, and then get more information about their work and how they are helping the Ghanaian real estate market and industry. Thank you. This has been African Home Building Analysis. My name is Nanaeho Trebia. Have a good day. Thank you.